This is one of the most epic defections that ever took place. It's the time when a Russian MiG-25 pilot stole a MiG-25, flew it like he stole it, and made it all the way to Japan. This is wild. What's up everybody, Ryan here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about Viktor Belenko. He's a MiG-25 pilot from Russia who stole the keys to a MiG-25, stole a whole bunch of classified documents and materials, and flew to Japan. Now the big question is, did he do this under the direction of the CIA? Was he somehow turned into an asset of the United States? Or was this just a random event that happened where Victor Blanco realized that defecting pilots were being paid large sums of money to defect to Western countries or Western friendly countries and share the secrets of those jets with those countries. Because at the end of the day, Victor Blanco got a cushy trust fund. He was actually given citizenship by President Gerald Ford and lived a quiet life as an American aerospace engineer, married someone from South Dakota and ended up just riding off into the sunset with a massive trust fund. So what were the reasons for Victor Belenko to do this, to steal this MiG-25? Well, at the time, it's worth saying that the Cold War was hot and heavy. And the United States didn't know if the MiG-25 was a fighter bomber or an interceptor. And at the time, the SR-71 was the new hotness of the United States. And that was a jet that they thought nothing could catch up to, nothing could shoot down. So naturally, they're going to look at any potential adversary of the SR-71 and and see if it could actually get the job done. So let's talk about the mission that Victor actually flew that day. He got in his MiG-25 carrying loads of secret documents, which was a big no-no at that time, but somehow he managed to sneak those documents into the cockpit of the MiG-25. It was September 6th, 1976, and Victor Belenko took off in a single ship, low-level mission in which he would never return from. At least he would never return to the USSR. He would never return to Russia. And his superiors at the time in the fighter squadron that he was a part of basically thought that he had crashed in the sea of Japan. So they weren't really worried about it because at the time, lots of aircraft were crashing, not just in Russia, but throughout the world because technology just wasn't to the level that it's at today. So Viktor Belenko blasted off on this mission and was flying low level through the hills and mountains of Russia when he disappeared from radar, which was all a part of the plan. When you're flying below a certain altitude, radar waves are not gonna be able to reach you. And Viktor Belenko knew this very well. So Victor used this to his advantage, and after he disappeared from Soviet radars, he continued to fly his low-level route in a predictable fashion until he reached the point of his route where he was the closest to Japan. Now it's disputed where he actually took off from, but as the crow flies from Russia, the port of Vladivostok, to the port of Tokyo, it's just over a thousand nautical miles, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump for the MiG-25. The MiG-25's range could be extended with external fuel tanks, and most likely this is the configuration that Viktor Belenko took off in. So he reached that point on his low level where he was the closest to Japan, and instead of continuing his route back to his base, he stayed low level and exited Russian territory and made his way to the Sea of Japan. And once over the Sea of Japan, Victor began his climb up where he was met with Japanese interceptors and escorted into an airbase in Japan. So as you could imagine, as Victor Belenko crossed into the Sea of Japan and met with the interceptors from Japan, his heart was racing. He didn't know what was gonna to happen to them. And as you know, the KGB in Russia, now called the FSB, doesn't exactly play nice with defectors. But Victor believed in his plan. He believed in coming to a country where he said some people wanna hug trees and some people wanna cut them down and they're able to live in harmony next to each other and hear each other's opinion. So the definition of harmony is up for debate, but it is true in the United States, obviously we can have different opinions and we don't disappear if we disagree with the government, which is what Viktor Belenko was trying to get to. And it's worth saying that there has been multiple other defectors. There's been Russian defectors that have gone to Turkey, which isn't the best idea because Turkey is very friendly to Russia. So when that happened, Russia promptly got the MiG-29 back that was defected to Turkey. This has also happened with North Korean pilots who flew a MiG-29 into South Korea, and they got asylum as well, and the MiG-29 stayed in the hands of the South Koreans. So Victor Belenko, making his way above the airport in Japan, looked down and he saw sweet, sweet 
freedom. But there was one thing left to do, and that was to land the MiG-25 on a runway that wasn't exactly designed for a MiG-25 to land on. The runway at Hakodate Air Base, Japan, where Victor was coming in to land at, was only 9,800 feet long. And for an aircraft like the MiG-25 Foxbat, this isn't exactly a normal runway. You'd want something at least this big, but preferably you'd want something around 11,000 feet long, potentially with arresting cables or some way to get the aircraft stopped rather than just counting on this small little 9,800 foot chunk of asphalt. And it's a new airport. So I can say as a pilot myself, whenever you go somewhere new, there's a little bit of like, oh, not really sure how this is gonna work out because the angle you're coming into the runway might be slightly different than somewhere else. The runway width might be different. So if the runway is skinnier, you're tended to think that you're higher up. And if the run runway is wider, you're tending to think that you're lower to the ground just based on your spatial awareness and the angle that you're viewing the runway from. So all these different factors combined along with weather that wasn't exactly great, Victor Belenko landed long and ended up running off the end of the runway in his MiG-25. This accident rendered the MiG-25 not airworthy so it couldn't take off but Victor promptly exited the cockpit and was met by Japanese officials. Shortly thereafter, the US CIA got their hands on the MiG-25 and began to disassemble the aircraft and see the radar cross-section, see the radar, and see how this aircraft would actually try to target the SR-71. And that's the main reason why the CIA and the Air Force was so concerned was that, hey, maybe there was something that could reach out and touch the SR-71. What they did notice is that the radar in the MiG-25 was more advanced than they had originally believed. The MiG-25 radar operated on a dual band frequency, which meant that it could be less susceptible to jamming, which was a big surprise to the West. Regardless of that, they did determine that the MiG-25 wasn't exactly as big of a threat to the SR-71 as they thought it was. After reviewing and looking at the radar cross-section and the engines of the MiG-25, they didn't exactly feel like the SR-71 was threatened as much as the Soviets had claimed that it was. So the West used this information to see how the Soviets were building their aircraft, and they've used this information for decades. The good thing that came out of it from the Soviets was once they realized the technology was out there anyways, they decided to expand a dumbed down version of the MiG-25 to certain countries that were allies to them. So they got some fat checks out of the deal, but ultimately it was definitely an intelligence loss for the Soviets. The MiG-25 ended up being crated and then shipped back to Russia. Japan threw a little parting shot and said, you owe us $10 million for the shipment. And there's no reports on whether that $10 million was actually paid off. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out another video. I've also got channel memberships right here on YouTube. We've got silver, gold, and platinum levels with exclusive content, exclusive lives, and comments that put you at the top of the list that I'll definitely be able to review. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys on the next video. Most of all, have a great day.